ladies and gentlemen we are back inside age of empires mobile there's been a ton of new updates that have come to the game and we are like three weeks away or less depending on when you're watching this from the global release of the game so in today's video we're gonna go over the last big event before global launch which is the global military exercise event and then we're gonna go over a bunch of the changes that have been made a bunch of improvements that have come to age of empires mobile since i first played it in soft launch a few months ago including weather sea seasons terrain heroes and more and then later in the video I'm gonna go over a couple of pieces of feedback that I actually have for the developers things that I really hope that we see you know maybe not at global launch but very shortly after the developers have been very responsive to feedback over the past few months and so so I'm sure the things that I've noticed will probably be addressed very soon but before we get into it what's going on guys cheers ladies and gentlemen this is none other than the Imperial City the very center of the map here in Age of Empires mobile and the reason that I'm showing this off is because the alliance that I'm in right now we're actually quite close to the Imperial City and as you can see some of our territory is actually overlapping with another alliance here and you might be wondering what's what's actually going on here Omniarch well what's going on is that we are part of the global military exercise event which is a week-long event that is currently ongoing that gets players in front of some of the mid to end game content basically a bunch of people including myself join into this server and the accounts could be quickly progressed to the mid to end game as you can see I have 5.5 million power up there I think the highest power in the server right now is about 8 million so like we're all kind of hovering around the four to seven million power range and as you can see I'm in the kin alliance right now and the OAA alliance is building up between this pass here and so we are making our way over to the Imperial City we're gonna have to see how this plays out most likely this coming weekend depending on when you're watching this I'm recording this on the 27th so we'll see what happens obviously we're building around this mountain pass as well in case things don't go well up here we could build this way uh but I guess the initial plan was to be kind of aggressive and maybe block them off so they have to go all the way around here which is going to be super annoying for them but basically the point of this event was to just get a bunch of people dump them on the map and see what the Imperial City gameplay is all about see who captures it first and just experience those open field fights and this event has a lot of familiar faces obviously we have Chiskel here in the test server we also have uh, I think Ihara is one of the R4 yeah one of the R4 officials in this alliance as well anyway before we get into some of the improvements that I've noticed here in Age of Empires mobile since I played during the soft launch I do want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Age of Empires mobile generous sponsors like them help me do what I do here on YouTube so if you haven't pre-registered yet for Age of Empires mobile the link will be in the description below currently the game is at over 3 million pre-registers which means everyone's gonna get their hands on Cleopatra a legendary hero for free at launch Launch. so if you don't want to miss that click the link in the description below and of course I'm going to continue my coverage of Age of Empires mobile leading up to and through the global launch of the game so if you guys are going to play Age of Empires mobile for global launch also join my discord down below I'm going to be trying to coordinate players who are interested in the game for that big global launch so I hope to see you guys over there I'm very excited for the launch of the game and thank you Age of Empires mobile for sponsoring this video okay now the first thing I want to go over here is seasons okay this is a very cool mechanic I don't know I don't think I've played another city builder game that does seasons like Age of Empires mobile has implemented here at least not on mobile okay so as you can see here it is currently snowing and if I click in the top right corner you can see it is right now it is winter and this will tell you the forecast of the next couple of days which is very cool uh, the weather actually does have an impact in open field so that's very exciting but you can see here that winter will last for two days so the seasons go pretty quickly right which is nice I don't like it when it's it's you know it's a little bit stale if we look at the same sort of season over and over and over again right but right now you could see that during winter gold production in your citadel so in your city is increased by five percent and the snowy weather is common okay now of course you could see that it is currently snowing right now and it will probably snow tomorrow as well uh there's heavy snow and snow flurry but if we click on winter here you can see the different seasons so after winter will be spring and you can see this green icon right here also shows up on the forecast so on the 30th is when it will become spring and during spring wood production speed in your citadel is increased by five percent 
and sunny rainy and cloudy weather are more common now this makes sense to me logically when I think about this right like winter you make more money because that's the holiday season and so your gold goes up in spring you're you get more wood production because that's when all the plants and trees are growing in summer we have stone production speed increased by five percent heavy rain and hot weather are more common here when I think of summer I think of like really hot desert days right and so when I think of that I think of stone production makes sense to me and then in autumn which is typically the harvest season your food production increases by five percent and heavy fog may occur in autumn greatly restricting the troops sight so I think the small buffs here for the different seasons make a lot of sense just logically like it's intuitive and I really love that and also the fact that the different seasons come with different weather effects which will in turn affect how open field fights are working is very very cool again I've never seen this in a mobile city builder game before I absolutely love this now while we're talking about seasons let's talk about let's talk about weather right at the time of recording this it looks like all the different weather effects don't have an updated description yet so they're probably still working that out but what we do know is how rain affects the terrain out in the world so if we have the weather set as drizzling or thunderstorm then the depression territory is converted into marsh territory and vice versa when it is sunny cloudy or hot out the marsh territory is converted back into depression territory and what does this mean well if we click terrains right here we can see that and this scrolls so there might be more terrains as the game goes on like as they release it globally and as more things come out different maps and things like that but as we can see here currently these two types of terrains the depression terrain slows down troop march speed but when it turns into a marsh it is significantly slowed down and your troops will become invisible in the marsh which I think is very very cool and that brings me to my next point that I want to talk about here and something that I noticed immediately when I started playing in this global military exercise event is that if I send an army out of my citadel right let's send out my Hammurabi this is my swordsman army if I take my army and I march them into this forest so that is just out in in the world right you're gonna see something interesting happen you'll see that the once they're in the forest the trees become a little bit transparent so you, I can still see my army but you'll see this little eyeball with a slash through it and what that means is my army's actually hidden from the enemies the enemies are not going to see that I am standing right here on the map so if I zoom out here an enemy can walk by they won't see me at all they'll see my city of course but they won't know that I have an army here in the trees and so I can jump out and ambush them without them knowing and I could also have an army over here or you could set up like your entire a uh, little ambush of your alliance members can be in these trees right and so I think that's super super cool it makes navigating around the map actually strategic right like you don't necessarily want to just take the straight line path because that would be the fastest of course if you want to get somewhere quickly that'll be that'll be the best way to go but if you want to play it safe if you want to play it strategic you can navigate around the open world and walk through the forests to make your sort of navigation around the map a little bit more sneaky a little bit more stealthy and I think that that is really cool here and as you can see as I'm walking through these trees it goes from like one batch of trees to the next there's never a moment as I'm passing through here where my army is visible to the enemy right which I think is super super cool I love how they're using terrain in Age of Empires mobile to make the open field combat a little bit more immersive a little bit more exciting and strategic than what we see in other city builder games on mobile so I love that and as I mentioned before when we have the sort of rainy weather here uh, this is going to make the marsh the same as forests okay so during the rain you're actually going to have more opportunities on the map as you go through those marshes to be invisible to the enemy now the downside of this is that unlike the trees and the forest that I just walked through the marsh is going to have significantly you know slower march speed so yes you'll be more stealthy in more areas but if your ambush doesn't go well or you get caught then you're going to have a hard time because you're going to be stuck it's going to be hard to run away uh, and you're just going to be kind of forced to be in that engagement so I love the terrain I love the weather I love the seasons and I love that you can hide in different parts of the map it makes the world feel super immersive now speaking of terrain one of the other cool things that they've revealed in the past in trailers and announcements is the ability to travel via riverway right which I think is super super cool and the way that that works here and this is the first time I've gotten my hands on this feature but let's Let's say that I wanted to sort of walk back over here to this Alliance flag, right? I want to garrison this flag. 
well there's a river in the way but luckily we actually own the command port that connects the two sides of this river right and so my Joan of Arc who you just saw was standing on this side of the riverbank is now automatically going to go to the command port and get on a boat and is going to sail across this river to the other command port that we control and from there we'll be able to walk over to uh, this alliance flag to join the garrison this is awesome I think this makes it very strategic uh to kind of build in certain areas of the map because as you see if I scroll out here there there is uh command ports that are on the river at certain points and so it is more strategic to build obviously towards those command ports rather than you know building in like this area right here which is there's no ports right here right you'd have to build up to the inland port or down to exile dock and yeah obviously the ones that are in white are not controlled by any alliance at all the ones that are in red are owned by an, an alliance that is not yours and then of course the ones that are in blue are owned by you so as you can see here uh, there is a lot of different um ports here and this dock actually looks like it is contested between our alliance which has territory on this side and ace which looks like they control the alliance dock on the other side and in fact they control the dock itself so here you have crater dock which is controlled by ace and they control the other side of the territory here and so they can now use that dock to sort of invade our territory which is uh probably not great but you know we'll see how that goes so you can use these docks to your advantage to sort of ambush enemies and build around the map in creative ways which i think is cool and as you can see my joan of arc has officially uh, landed on the other side and she is now walking to this alliance flag and of course if i want to send her back to my city she'll turn around and she'll jump on a boat and she'll go back the other way now the other thing that i want to point out here and uh, this is super cool is the air dock so this functions similar to how the regular ports work over here but these are airships which is super cool so basically the air docks can be used to travel by air of course you have blimps and as i zoom out here you're going to be able to see the sort of blimp icon show up on the map and if you control various air docks then what you can do is send your troops to that air dock and fly them to a different dock that you control or you can send them to one of your wonders that you control as well now because this server is only a couple of days old this is the only dock that we have access to so as you can see here there's only one alliance dock that we have um, but that would be the way that you would depart to another air dock or if you control wonders on the map you can tap to wonder and you can send your army there to fly them to one of the wonders in the world unfortunately again we don't have any wonders given the time frame of this of this event but overall i think this is a super cool mechanic and i think that this is going to play a really crucial part again to navigating around the map the map is huge and as you can see you know you don't move super fast so if you don't have any teleports to get you around places then you're gonna have to get creative with how you navigate around the map and so the fact that age of empires mobile has so many different ways to accomplish this is very cool and i'm excited to see how these affect war and gameplay now the other thing that's worth noting is that um, i tried before you are not able to teleport at least from what i can tell on top of the land that is owned by the dock right so it's not like i can teleport my city right here and sort of like camp it and make sure that people can't take it you have to be a certain distance away which is why all of our cities are over here so lots of strategic elements here and i'm really excited to see how they play out when the game is fully launched okay so that's everything that i want to show off outside in the world let's jump back into my citadel here and show off a couple of the cool things that i've noticed have changed since that since i first played the soft launch one of them is the villager management page which i find super super cool very handy because in the past if you wanted your villagers to go and work at a certain mill or you know gather some gold in the map you had to actually go to those buildings and go to those areas in order to uh, assign to them and that was fine but I think it's what like as you progress through the game and you have more and more villagers and as there's more things to do it makes a lot of sense to have everything be able to be managed in one page and this just makes your life a lot easier this is a quality of life upgrade here and essentially what this does is it tells you how many villagers you have in your city so I have 59 57 of them are actually working and two of them are idle so they're not doing anything and so what I can do here is look at the different like bonuses that I'm getting and decide where I want to put these villagers where would I get the most value for me I think I'm gonna put them in I'll just do one for gold and then I'll do one for the stone production here 
and so as you can see those numbers go up immediately as those villagers go in and accomplish those tasks and as you have more and more villagers if you have a surplus you can actually send them to gather the wood in your actual city like they can come over here and cut this tree down that it just zoomed in on right in the spring and summertime it's a lot easier to see these because the trees are actually golden compared to the other ones which are green but you can actually send them to literally cut down trees within your city which i think is really cool or you can send them to like literally get you stone in your city like look at this this just this looks like a stone that's just part of my city map right but if i click on that it's a quarry and i can send villagers here now as you saw I, i'm using all my villages already but that's not where the fun ends here with the villager management page because as you can see there's a tab called limited time assignment and if I tap on that you can see that there's actually buffs as you proceed and get more villagers in your city there's different buffs that you can unlock here which take a certain amount of your villagers for the assignments here so you can reduce your healing queue by five hours by committing six of your villagers to that which is nice or you can have a building reduction by two hours for six of your villagers which is cool or if you come to the top where it says code of villagers you tap on that these are actual projects that you have in your city where when you level up to different town hall levels and have certain numbers of villagers you get things like the collective project or the trading team right where it says you can assign villagers to the market to increase the daily exchange limits and if I go back here well since I unlock that boom here we see the market daily exchange limit increase right and the market is where you can exchange like one resource for another right which I think is super super cool so yeah lots of updates to the villager system which I think is awesome and it also sort of sets Age of Empires mobile apart from other city builder games I don't think I've played another mobile city builder game that has a sort of villager system I'm trying to remember I, I really don't think I have so very exciting stuff here and again as you progress with your town center you can train more villagers and you can upgrade your houses to have room for all of them and so very cool system here again adds more strategy to the actual city building component rather than the war component although there is implications there like I said with reducing your healing times speaking of war let's talk about heroes they've actually added new heroes to Age of Empires mobile today at like the day that I'm recording this they have had a new update come out previously I've talked about Boudica we can see her in the game now she actually probably came into the game a few weeks ago but there are definitely some new heroes that we've never seen before we have Dao Chan here who looks great we have Toyotomi Hideyoshi I don't know if I'm pronouncing these names wrong by the way so I do apologize if I am we have our boy Yi Song Ye in the game here of course he is a cavalry hero in Age of Empires mobile which is very interesting obviously he has the bow and arrow which I mean look at dude look at the stare you could tell he's an absolute giga Chad bro he is legend super cool stuff here even his skills show a lot of bow and arrow activity so it's interesting that he's a cavalry hero we have Sejong the Great another cavalry hero in the game looking really sweet Oda Nobunaga baby this is one of the heroes that I was very excited about when the game was first announced and he's finally here he's finally in the game he is a swordsman obviously look at that he's dual wielding the blade right here looking super cool I love the way that the light shines off the gold of the helmet just looks super awesome we love to see it and of course you can zoom out and look at the entire model here which just looks great the cape flowing in the wind so right now there are 59 heroes in the current version of Age of Empires mobile so at launch this game is going to have so many different playable historical figures which I think is very very exciting like there's just there's just so much here if you are a fan of history and all these different figures like this is going to be probably one of the best games on mobile to collect all these different historical figures Leonidas looking incredible we have a Lubu oh my god dude Sun Tzu a legendary in this game but that's not the only change that I've noticed for the heroes here in the game because as you can see on the right they actually have equipment for heroes now which is I mean this is a big part of any city builder mobile war strategy game right like you get the heroes and you got to put gear on them and so here you could see we got our hands on actually a couple of legendary pieces for our pikeman army which is very exciting here so as you can see we have a four piece set we have the power of abyss this is a legendary helmet and when you first get it it has a certain amount of defense and then as I leveled it up to level 20 in fact I can do that again here for the video you'll see that the amount of defense that you get from that piece 
goes up the more that you level up that piece which is very cool max level is 80 let's bring it to 25 so my OCD is satisfied and then as you get extra copies of these you can use the extra copy of the piece to ascend it right and then you use these legendary magma crystals I need four more to finish off the star and that's going to give me extra pikeman health which is very cool so that's the helmet we have the arm piece here the ring of chaos then we have the chest piece master of death and the boots the nightmare boots okay so you can see that they all give different attributes it looks like the boots and the arms give you attack whereas the chest and the helmet give you defense and you could see that the sort of upgrade path is very similar at least for the helmet and chest you get health unit capacity damage taken from unit types that counter you is lowered lots of cool stuff here and then here we have the base elimination rate during sieges goes up so like you're going to be eliminating more enemy troops with that upgraded gear which is very cool so lots of stuff to look forward to from a gear enhancement perspective you know of course you can get your hands on different blueprints and you can craft the uh pieces at the smithy which is this building right here you can level this up and you can forge new pieces of course there are different rarities so there's like gray blue purple and then legendary pieces as well right now I've got a couple of different pieces for different troop types of course but there's these random blueprints and so when you forge it it takes a certain amount of time this time we'll go down as you level up your smithy and last night I started forging one before I went to bed and so now it is ready and so you open this and you see what I what do I get and I actually got a purple piece from just a generic gray random blueprint which is really really cool so you can get legendaries this way as well I'm gonna start my next forging because it's gonna take a while but you can actually farm for equipment here in the game there are buildings around the map called armories and you can occupy the armory with a certain number of units and as you can see here as you're occupying that you can get your hands on a rare or epic blueprint and you can get your hands on iron meteorites these are what you need in order to craft for the different pieces of gear so I can actually click this go ahead and hit occupy and send my army to the armory and uh then I'm gonna basically build up a camp here and farm the materials that I need to craft more gear so very immersive stuff here it's not like you just get the pieces from like I mean I'm sure you can get it in various other ways but like this makes sense logically right like you go and you farm what you need to build the equipment it makes sense okay now let's get into the part of the video where I have a couple of pieces of feedback for the developers and these are things that I imagine they're probably still working on but I do want to at least touch on them here uh and the first thing that I want to point out is the island tactics game mode this is something that I pointed out and talked about actually in my last age of empires video and this is sort of a new game mode that they introduced where you go to these different islands and you can set up your different armies in certain configurations to battle up against the enemy now I'm on stage 174 and as you can see here I can only put my armies in the green boxes right and so like in the early stages like the map is set very obviously like you have the first three rows and the enemy has the rest of the rows right and so it, it makes a lot of sense you can kind of just line up your armies to attack the enemy in the way that you want but as you proceed farther and farther they sort of restrict where you can put your armies and it becomes a lot more strategic which I think is cool at least in theory and the reason that I say that is because and this is part of my feedback you see we have different cards here and I can increase my damage heals all allied troops all this other stuff I haven't used a single card and I'm going to move my head here just so you can see where I where I clicked that I haven't used a single card and in fact I have been able to auto battle my way up to level 174 without really doing anything right um and that I think is a little bit shallow right and I think honestly again this is a relatively newer game mode when I first played the original soft launch this game mode was not there so I'm sure they're still working on this the fact that they have hundreds and hundreds of levels already built is insane like if you go to the rewards here there's up to 800 levels of this right and so like there's a lot of rewards to be gained here and you get currency over time which is very cool so there are rewards to doing this but it feels a little bit shallow right the fact that I can just auto battle like up to 174 like and and the reason that I stopped here is not because I lost it's because I just stopped right like I, I I wanted to do other things I left the game running for a while like probably 45 minutes I was like all right I don't know how far this is gonna go but it just seems like you know it, there's a lot of strategy potential here but it's a it's a little bit shallow uh, maybe it's gonna be a little bit different when the the global launches here and I and like of course my account was progressed relatively quick for the seven day event right so like it's not this is not the exact experience that you're going to have when the game first comes out but I don't know it just seemed uh, a little odd the next piece of feedback is this banner right here a governor obtained Joan of Arc 
this banner look there it is again this is one of the most annoying parts um, of being in a new server in age of empires mobile is that as players and there's another one as players open up or summon different heroes it basically tells the whole server that somebody got access to a certain hero right which is cool but there needs to be a way to opt out of seeing that banner because when it, especially when a server first opens that banner stays there permanently because so many people get access to so many summons at the beginning of a server that like you just see an unlimited amount of governors getting their hands on these heroes and it's just annoying like the banner is there permanently the fix would be to let you leave the system group chat and like here comes the banner again right like somebody is doing summons again it's exciting to like be able to celebrate when you see like a, an alliance member get a really good hero it's like oh my god that's cool but like i should be able to op opt out of this because it's just uh, it's unbearable that this uh this just goes across the screen all the time all day it's like really annoying it's gotta go or you gotta make it smaller and push it up higher or or make it more transparent or something or maybe let us turn it off for 24 hours at a time i don't know but something's got to change here especially as someone who records content like it's going to be there all the time like no thanks oh my god it's still going anyway the next piece of feedback is actually already on the screen here and uh what it is is these cities are missing right these are these are actually allied cities and at my current zoom level i cannot see them if i zoom in a little bit closer you'll see that they actually load in and if I zoom out a little bit farther, you'll see that they actually turn into blue dots, which makes sense. But the sort of in between zooms here, it just shows their name, but it doesn't show where they are. And I think that's a little bit weird. It feels a little clunky. It feels like there should be something there, right? Like it should be like an outline of a city or something, right? Like an in between, like obviously you don't have to load the full like city detail, but show something there. Like for example, my Citadel, you could see that it's a little green tower. Um, I'd like it to be a little bigger here, but it's different because I see my logo here, right? And it's in green, so I know where I am. But like with these, maybe you want to show like a little blue blue tower to show that it's like an ally city or, or player. And then when you zoom out all the way, then it's dots. The dots make sense. It's like, okay, that's a player city. That's cool. But these little in between the in between zooms here, where it only shows the name in big letters, a little bit confusing. I hope they can fix that. It's probably just uh again, I'm sure they're working on that because it looks a little, a little bit odd. And my final piece of feedback is something that I already know that they're working on. I have confirmation that they're working on this, but it's something that I really, really am looking forward to. And that is a PC port. I love playing these types of games on my computer and especially age of empires like it is historically one of the like best original pc games right and so i want to play this game on my computer there are ways to do that obviously you could see i have a cursor right here but it's just not as smooth as an actual official port and so i'm really looking forward to that port i don't know how long it's going to be until they release the game for pc Hopefully it's sooner rather than later because it's going to really be a big, big quality of life improvement for those of us that do like to play on PC. I like to see these games with a bigger screen. Of course, playing on your phone is going to be great. It's going to be buttery smooth. I mean, the game is called Age of Empires Mobile. It is optimized for mobile. It's going to function great on mobile. But again, I want that big screen for all that action. There's so much detail in the world. The game is so beautiful and especially for like different, you know, open field engagements and war. Like I want to see this on a bigger screen on my computer uh, and, and just the performance I know for the PC port is going to be way better than the current ways that you can play the game on your computer. So really looking forward to that. I hope we get some sort of update on that when we could expect that. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, it could be months away. So who, who knows? I'm almost positive that they've confirmed it's not going to be here for the launch of the game. So I, at least we know that, but I feel like that should be a priority. Anyway, guys, that is everything I wanted to talk about with age of empires mobile during the current global military exercise event lots of updates to the game lots of improvements things that i'm excited about and i'm glad i got my hands on during this event and i'm really interested to see who's going to capture the imperial city with that being said if you made it to the end of the video consider dropping a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other age of empires mobile players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload an age of empires mobile video and comment down below your thoughts on age of empires mobile are you excited for the global launch on october 
October 17th are you pre-registered yet that is going to be very important get your hands on a free legendary get your hands on Cleopatra on day one if you're going to play the game you might as well pre-register like what are you waiting for go ahead and get it done and once again I do want to thank Age of Empires Mobile for sponsoring today's video I'm very excited for the global launch and so please consider supporting them with the link down below guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace